Welcome to this week's Coaches Show. Pat Farball with assistant coach Tyra Melendez, the Red Flash. They are heading to the postseason. SFU will be in action for sure on Monday, March 7th, and it will be an away game. Uh, we're not sure of the opponent. It will either be Mount St. Mary's or Wagner on the road. That game will be able to be seen on Northeast Conference front row. Tyra, thank you for joining me. Thank you. So, down the stretch we come. Uh, we are uh, headed into the postseason. Your mindset as the coach on where the team is at physically and, and mentally, because this time of year, it can be a grind. It is a grind. And, and do you feel the team is in a good place as we head into the NEC tournament? Um, I do. I think the girls are, are focused. They're locked in, understanding that you can't look too far ahead, um, especially now more than ever. It's, it's one game at a time. And that's why we're focused tonight just on Mount. We'll focus on Monday after tonight's game. The leadership. We've talked. I've talked to Keela. I've talked to some of the players. Uh, obviously, we had a difficult non-conference portion of the schedule. And you arrived uh, in December. So you were right uh, when that was going on. Uh, but uh, I would say teams don't bounce back the way we do and uh, a lot of times you start that slowly it goes the wrong direction but this team was able to rebound how important was leadership to that turnaround um it's essential to, to any team i think leadership leads and guides the girls you know when when we need it most and in our captains and jada and jordan the upperclassmen just in general uh, making sure we stay locked in every day making sure that despite you know the the non-conference we we had an ability to, to bounce back and i think those games that we won um, early on helped helped a lot to just boost that confidence that they needed to to see that they are capable of great things when they work hard um, and they do it together this team can be very very good Talking to Tyra Melendez, joined the program, as I mentioned, recently in December. She spent two seasons as the director of basketball operations in the Northeast Conference at Bryant University, played her collegiate basketball at the University of Rhode Island, uh, a 2016 grad of URI and was a co-captain, speaking of leadership, for three of those seasons, a 1,000-point scorer for the Rams and also grabbed more than 600 rebounds, 602 boards to be exact and 1,023 points. You also blocked 154 shots. You're 5'11". Uh, Jada is, plays bigger than she is. Uh, probably uh, it was a, a challenge for you to compete at that level and be able to find that success inside. Absolutely. And um, I had the, the fortunate um, help of, of my coaches to, to give me that ability, give me the freedom. Um, to be a little bit more aggressive on the defensive end. Um, it did help that as a guard who was 5'11", I was playing the four position because Daniel LaForce played the dribble drive. So I was actually banging down there with the post players a little bit. Um, and they underestimated my height. Um, what I don't have in height, I have in athleticism. So that definitely helped out a little bit. Um, just grateful that I was able to help my teammates in the best way that I could. And speaking of Jada, by the way, fans, she's currently third in NCAA Division I in rebounding at 12.6. She's less than a rebound and a half behind the national leader, who's a freshman, Anissa Morrow's 14 rebounds per game. She plays for DePaul, and Jada's also closing in on Jess Sanoble's single-season record of rebounds at 366. I want to talk beyond your playing days at URI. You were born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts, but your parents moved from Puerto Rico to the United States, and you have been a part of the Puerto Rican national team since 2014, and you were a starter on the Puerto Rican Olympic team at the 2020 Games is what they call them, but it was 2021 in Tokyo. Tell our, our audience, our alumni and, and the fans about that experience. Um, it was an, like an incredible experience, uh, despite obviously the pandemic still going on, so fans weren't allowed. Um, just the experience itself was unforgettable. The moment is so big, the cameras are so big. I mean, everything is just twice as large as your, your average tournament. And you're in a village with athletes that are amazing at the sport that they do, and they you're working out with them, you're seeing the grind that they have, and it was just awesome to, to experience and to see. Um, I don't think I, I realized or it didn't really sit in until 
after I came back and the Olympics were still going, and I turned on the TV, and it was kind of cool to say, you know, I was just, I was just there, mom. So um, it was unforgettable. It's an experience that I'll never have, you know, that I'll never forget, and, and I hope to relive again at, at some point in my life. Played three games in the Olympics. It was the first time Puerto Rico has ever qualified for the Olympics in women's basketball, and actually the fifth Puerto Rican team in any sport to participate in the Olympic Games, men's basketball, baseball, women's volleyball, softball, and now with the team that Tyra was on, uh, now five teams, you had a chance to play with some incredible players. You played with Jennifer O'Neill, who played at Kentucky, as well as in the WNBA, and that that lineup was just so talented. Absolutely. Um, my teammates are great, and they come from all different places. I mean, some of the girls from Puerto Rico who maybe didn't go at uh, Division One, but are absolutely phenomenal. Pamela Rosado, my starting point guard, captain of the team. Um, great, great leadership. Awesome experience. I mean, she just she sees the game very, very differently. Um, Jasmine Guathme, who went to JMU, um, had a great career at JMU. I mean, I, I was surrounded by a lot of talent, and that made my job a lot easier. And you've been playing for, and well, before I get to this, how, how important was it uh, for you to give uh, the people of Puerto Rico a lift? The, obviously COVID, but the series of earthquakes that Puerto Rico had sustained just prior uh, to the games in 21, uh, I got to believe that it was really uh, uplifting in terms of uh, sports fans just to see uh, the pride and, and another team from Puerto Rico making the Olympic Games. Um, it's definitely, it's why we do it. You know, you, you don't play for the name in the back. It just so happens that I get to represent my family at the same time that I represent a country that has been through a lot, has been through Hurricane. You know, Hurricane Maria was devastating for us. Um, and to see or give, you know, the people of Puerto Rico just some joy or, you know, something to look forward to, even if it was a game of basketball in the Olympics, um, was definitely, you know, absolutely moving for us. And, and it was our force. It's the reason why we practice so hard. It's the reason why we go so hard and, and accomplish the things that we do and just try to bring Puerto Rican national team or women's basketball to the next level is for that reason. So that little girl who just suffered a hurricane can watch the TV and say, you know what, they're pushing through it. We can push through it. The country can do it. We can do it. Um, so it was, it was nice. It was really nice to give them something to look forward to and, and to put a smile on their face. Win or lose, we're doing something great. Um, we're doing something monumental and historical for, for the country. So that was really awesome. She had four blocks in the Olympics, <laughs> uh, just for the record, in the three games that Puerto Rico played. Talking to Tyra Melendez. You've been a member of Puerto Rico's national team since you were 16 years old. We were talking before we went on air, but one of the coaches at the River School where you played had a connection that's a lot of basketball. Is. is this something that you think you'll continue uh, to be involved with the national team moving forward? Um, as of right now, I am an active player. So um, my commitment to them has always been um, consistent. And I'm going to play until I can, until the body is, is done. But I am slowly but surely transitioning my playing career into my coaching career. And you've also seen uh, parts of the world, uh, in addition uh, to the Caribbean, you played in the Ecuador Women's Professional League, as well as the Croatian First Women's League back in 19. So you've had a chance. Basketball has uh, allowed you not only to go to the Olympic Games in Tokyo, but to see other parts of the world as well. And uh, how much does that mean to you? That's everything. I don't think any, you know, the little girl from, from Boston, Massachusetts, did not think she'd go as far as, as Florida. Um, on a flight, but um, to be able to travel the world is, is awesome, and I get to share that with my family, I get to share that with my mom, um, my brothers who, who don't necessarily travel as much as I do, but they get to see it through FaceTime and stuff like that, so um, I don't think I would have the experience or, or the ability to travel as much um, as I did with basketball, so I'm very grateful for the sport, um, the people who have helped, and those who had just continued to push me in all the things that I get to see because of basketball. Basketball is my first love. Well, and our players are very fortunate to have, uh, you know, a player that can still get up and down the court, <laughs> but also all of the experiences yeah. that you've gained, uh, both uh, here in the States, but especially uh, playing for the Puerto Rican national team and all the wisdom you bring uh, to the team. Uh, I'm sure they benefit from that. It's good to have you here in Loretto. Thank you so much. And I, I hope that, you know, that's the, that's the goal to, to be able to share within the things that I know and I've learned uh, through my years of, of playing um, and just be able to, to see them grow with it and see them run with it. I think that's the best part of, of coaching is, is to see the progress and to have them see it in, in games and practice and 
to give them a challenge and see them accomplish it and be happy about it. Um, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm grateful to Keela for, for the opportunity that she gave me. And I look forward to, to what the Red Flash can do in the future. Tara, thank you. Good luck in thank the NEC so tournament much. next week. Thank you. What's better than a McDonald's Big Mac? How about getting one for free? The Red Flash Three Point Madness is back. When St. Francis makes eight three pointers in a home game, Big Macs are buy one, get one free. It's another reason to love Red Flash basketball. The offer is only good the day after the game at participating restaurants. Welcome back to the Coaches Show. Pat Farbaugh with senior Kaylee Kovac. Her team, they are preparing for the postseason. It is March and tournaments around the country are happening right now. Our NEC Women's Basketball Tournament will begin on Monday, March 7th when the top four seeds host six through eight. The Flash, we will be on the road. We will be playing against Mount St. Mary's or Wagner in Emmitsburg or on Staten Island. Kaylee, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Kaylee is a senior from Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, attended Jim Thorpe High School, and she is studying physical therapy here at SFU. She has played in 11 games this season and started last weekend's senior game. Uh, obviously an emotional day. You have family here. Uh, importantly, we got the win, but talk to us a little bit about your feelings as, you know, you can see... Uh, the, your career coming to a close and, and, and where you're at right now with all of the things that go on. Oh, yeah. Last weekend was super special. Um, getting to have my like, parents and my sisters walk me out for the game, um, having my grandmother in the crowd and uh, my loved ones watching at home who couldn't be there. Um, it was just so special for me knowing how hard I've worked um, from the time I've picked up a basketball, knowing all the sacrifices that have been put into the sport, both on my end and on my family's end um, growing up and just being able to experience that special moment with them. Um, also starting the game too, uh, it, it was emotional. Just had a couple of assists. I did, yeah. Um, the pioneers yeah, the win. Yeah, Willie and Jordan hit those big shots to get me them, but <laughs> um, it was just, it was such a special moment and I will forever be grateful for that. And as basketball is coming to a close, um, it's definitely gonna be hard to say goodbye to something that I've loved for so long. Um, but it's not a goodbye, it's a change what I'm doing with it. Talking to Kaylee Kovac, she played in 49 games in her four-year career. It's still going on as we head into the postseason tournament. And we had the seniors on the show last week, and I didn't get a chance to follow up with you. Your parents, Lauren and Rob Kovac, we talked about you playing for your dad at Jim Thorpe High School. But you mentioned in the panel discussion that your parents both played at the college level, uh, where did they play? And uh, is your game similar to either uh, of your parents' games or, or both in some ways? Um, so they both played at Elizabethtown. That's where they met, actually. Um, so, and my grandmother actually also played at Elizabethtown, really? too. So oh, that was my mom's mother. Um, so my, there was a lot of family connection there. Um, and in terms of my game, my dad was a really good shooter. So I don't think I picked that up from him. <laughs> I think my sister got that one. Um, although my shot's gotten better. Uh, you should have seen it when I was like really young. But um, I think they both have elements of their game that have incorporated into mine. Um, and I just think both of their knowledge of the game has helped me so much. And if like my game has anything, I think I have a great basketball IQ. And I, it's from both of them, um, all of the basketball we've watched over the years and all the knowledge that they've shared with me, um, especially my dad as my coach, hearing the little things all the time about him talking about a game plan in advance um, and just understanding the game at such a high level is a lot of that has to do with them. And you mentioned your sister, Caden. You played with her in high school. And if I'm recalling correctly, you mentioned you were in the same class yes. as she was. Uh, but are you twins? No, Irish twins. Uh, so uh, okay. we're, we're 14 months apart. Um, so we were in the same grade. And uh, she actually played a semester at the college level as well at Marywood University um, up in the... Scranton area. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, a lot of basketball in my family. And your dad coached you and Caden throughout your high school careers at yep. Jim Thorpe? Yeah, so he started coaching there when I was in third grade. Um, and he actually was the one that started our elementary program, which allowed me to play basketball for the first time because when I was that age, there was only a program for boys. 
Um, so my dad started the elementary girls program as well. So he's head coached through my um, entire high school career there. Prior to that, he had coached at Panther Valley High School, um, which is in Nesquehoney, so it's the town next to us. And now he's actually coaching there again. It's a full circle. Yeah, it really is a full <laughs> circle situation. You're from Jim Thorpe. Mm -hmm. Trivia question for you. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, Jim Thorpe, right. an incredible athlete that, that really uh, made a lot of his, uh, enjoyed a lot of his success in Pennsylvania. He was an All-American in four sports at Carlisle Indian Industrial School. Can you, our Jim Thorpe native, name the four sports that he earned All-American honors in? So football, baseball, and track. I got those three because those are the pictures in my high school. Okay, what so was I know the other this one. one? I don't know if I know the other one. I'm going to hate myself when you say it. Uh, an excellent lacrosse player, mm. uh, the 1912 I didn't know that Olympian. One. Yeah, we, we, so in my high school, well, his memorial is actually a block from my house, or two blocks probably. Um, so I should know that. But in our high school, we have like three huge pictures of him, and one's the track picture, one's the football, one's the baseball. Okay. Yeah, tremendous lacrosse player, and yeah. You have a little sister, Grace, who's much younger than you. We were talking a little bit about her in the senior panel discussion, and you think uh, she might uh, pick up a basketball and run with it the way you and your sister did? Yeah, I hope so. She's been playing since kindergarten, actually, um, in our elementary league, because at the time my dad was still running the elementary league. Um, so they had extended. When I first started, it was for third grade and up, and now then when he was towards the end of him running that, um, it had gone all the way down to kindergarten. So it was great to see so many kids playing, and I always helped out with the league, um, just like seeing so many kids at such a young age enjoying the sport. Um, and she likes it. She's also playing some other sports. She played soccer in the past. Um, I helped coach at her with that too. Um, didn't really like that one as much. She's playing volleyball right now too, which I never played. So, I mean, a lot of my friends here at St. Francis are volleyball players. So I can kind of help, ask for help um, with that from them, but I never played that. So that's uh, something new and she really likes that. And she does like basketball. Um, she just wrapped up her basketball season a few weeks ago that she's playing in and uh, she's looking at playing some AU, probably not yet, um, but looking maybe next year. Uh, at that and like I said last week I'm gonna spend a lot of time with her this summer try to make her love basketball as much as I do. Well, it was awesome at the Sacred Heart game like you had mentioned earlier in the show to see you and your family together and we talk about family uh, here at St. Francis but it has been really a family affair your basketball career. Yes. Kaylee enjoy these last couple of weeks hopefully we'll extend it and make it closer to three weeks but enjoy the last moments of your college basketball career and, and thanks for everything you've done here at St. Francis. Yeah. Thank you for having me, and um, I'm so grateful for every single opportunity I've been given um, from the time I was little to the recruiting process that brought me here to these last four years playing. Um, I will definitely enjoy and miss basketball, but make the most of the last few weeks I have.